Hello everyone and happy Doctor Who Day or Black Friday because I've landed on the same day today so that's quite interesting. Anywho, I promised this so many weeks ago but I've only just had the time now to do it. Actually I haven't. That's a lie. I'm only doing it now because it's Doctor Who Day tomorrow, or for you today. Woo! Amazing! Fantastic! Let's all party! Anywho. So, anyways, let's count down the top five worst 10th Doctor stories. Starting with number five. Now, originally, these were the number five and number four were the original way, the other way around, but I've switched them around now because, in retrospective. So, at number five, I'm going to put New Earth. So, number five, New Earth, five out of ten. This story, I was once scared of, I have to say. I could not watch to the end, and so I never knew what happened until, you know, I saw it. But granted, I was six or seven, I think, at the time, most likely. But, looking back, oh my goodness. Did this story want to fall any more flat on its face? This story seems like nothing happens. The acting is all over the shop and the seats are inconsistent. Bringing back Cassandra and making an arse joke to such a menacing villain. That was like having Sharon's Jet come back and making him wear a fez and letting people call him Bernie. This story just dropped the ball so hard on literally everything. The acting, the set, Cassandra's even a bit off in this whole story. That's a shame because I really liked um, The End of the World. Don't take that out of context. Number four. Partners in Crime, 4 out of 10. Now, this one is not the lowest story. There are lower rated, but I need to put this on the list because it's such a black sheep story. What I mean by that is Series 4 was such a good run of stories that I had almost all 7 or above for my rating. So when a story like this comes and it just falls flat, the story is so, so too far basic. Almost Sarah Jane Adventure basic. But even that show had more stuff happening than in this story. Now, I un now it's understandable that a story like this was just easy for people to get back into Doctor Who over all it just seems a bit dull and flat and way too simple. It's sort of the problem I'm having with the Jodie Whittaker series at the moment. Number three, Pest Control, with a three out of ten. I know you may be thinking, pest control? I, I, I don't remember this story. Is it, is, are you sure you don't mean Unicorn and the Wasp? No, I don't mean Unicorn and the Wasp. This was an audio exclusive that you can get. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can get it. And it's also part of the Tenth Doctor audio box set thingy that the BBC um, radio thingy whatever that was released. This is an audio story, so I don't have much to say for this one, apart from I want my money back. This is just an undercooked story with basic filler Doctor Who written all over it. But the reason it is not lower is because David Tennant gives such an outstanding performance, but nothing could save this story. Maybe if it was put to a book or big finish, it could have been a little better, but it just 
dis donc Number two, you probably guess what my number two and number one are. So let's get this one out of the way. Number two, Fear Her with a three out of ten. Now, just to say the acting is bad is putting it nicely, shall we say. The story is nonsensical, it's set slightly in the future, but literally this story came just after The Idiot's Lantern, and being that them two stories are very alike, it felt just like deja vu. Deja vu, I've just been in this place before, higher on the street, and I know it's my time to But seriously, the child acting, I know you've everyone said this, but it's not that great. The CG on it is fine, apart from the screw monster, like what the fuck was that? Seriously. All the other bits of it work just fine, just fine, whatever. Now just before we get on to our, our number one, we should get on to some dishonourable mentions. And I'm just going to say, The Next Doctor, 5.6 out of 10, Planet of the Dead, 6.3 out of 10, and Born Again, a 6 out of 10. Now, a lot of Tenants Run was really, really strong. This is especially in the writing department, the acting wasn't too bad. The CGI is a little bit dated nowadays, but it's still fine. Unlike the new era that's very mixed, that it could have great effects but poor writing, or great writing but the acting's not great, or the set's not great. Uh, but these dishonourable mentions just also completely drop the ball as well. If I was doing a top 10, you could see where I'll put all of these. But that stands to it. So anyways, moving on to my number one. Number one, of course, is Love and Monsters with a two out of 10. You're probably sitting there scratching your head like, two out of 10? You, you for real? It should be a negative 18 out of 10. It's that bad. Now, I'll admit, I do enjoy parts of this story. Literally, these only parts are the only parts I actually enjoy about it. The actor of Elton has a great ish storyline, like how it explores the Doctor Who fandom, how Doctor Who fans are around. That's it. And, and a bit of Jackie. Jackie's alright in it. Apart from that, nothing else. The set's crap, acting's crap, story's crap, the monster is crap, looks crap, and the CG effect is crap. Story is again, I keep saying this, crap. Literally everything about this is crap. Even and it's not <sighs> Seriously, this story, if it was put earlier in the season, maybe I wouldn't put it so low, but it came literally after the best David Tennant story, being the Impossible Plant and the Satan Pit. Yes, my number one Tennant story is right next to my least favourite Tennant story. Are you kidding me? Grr, but seriously, this story just fails so hard. I think it should have been done around series three, maybe series four. The, the story it was way too early. It was done far too early. And like, it just irritates me how like little effort was put into this story. It feels like the entirety of series two was written and then they realized, shit, we haven't got an episode here. What should we do? And then they did the contest, of course, and they could draw like a little Shrek looking monster. And then they was like, yeah, Let's make a story out of that, and it was just, oh, fuck sake. Seriously, it was just so bad. I can't stress this enough how bad the story is. And also, this got a 2 out of 10. Let's just say that. So, if this is the lowest on my tenant list, you don't want to know what's on my actual top 10 or top 5 worst list, if that's only a, a, a 2. 
But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Hope you had a fantastic Doctor Who day, Black Friday. Hopefully you won't all get trampled. Bring a shield with you, maybe. I don't know. Depending on when this video goes up. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And just before I go, I want to ask everyone... Do you want to see a review of Spider-Man for the PS4? Because I've recorded some footage for it, as you may have seen, and I'm going to be writing a little script to do a review upon it. Um, if you don't want to, that fine, just leave a comment, please. And if you all guys, can you just leave comments, please? Like, no one leaves comments, I want to speak and talk to my audience. Well, that's maybe just it, I've got no audience. How sad. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you later.